Hey, it's been a great year for 3D. There are over 48 3D movies either in production in Hollywood right now or uh, already released. And any sports fans here? Yeah. Well, we'll get some sports fans. Yeah, I tell you, this was the year that started. We saw, we witnessed the, the worldwide rollout of 3D television for the home market. But I'm not here to talk about 3D in cinema or 3D in TV. I'm here to talk about when 3D comes to school. In the Boulder Valley School District, we have four schools that are currently engaged in an case, international case study of the effectiveness and potential of 3D in teaching and learning. This uh, case study is going to be joined by six U.S. school districts, followed by schools in nine European countries, and within a year, this two-year case study will be joined by schools in China, Japan, and India. But before I go much farther, let me uh, explain one common issue, and that's the definition of 3D. Now, what I'm not talking about today is zooming in using Google to find a 3D rendering of your community. And I'm not talking about a 3D CAD rendered image that you'd create on a computer. And I'm really not talking at all about the the, uh, what they call the 3D Winter Olympics flyover. It's an activity you could do on the web during the Winter Olympics. Now, those are all 3D-like, but they're really 2D. We call those virtual 3D and or pseudo 3D. What we're talking to about tonight instead is something called stereoscopic 3D. And the best way to explain and understand stereoscopic 3D is uh, to take a look at what you see. Now, in stereoscopic 3D, the image can extend from the screen backwards into, to give you a real depth of field sense, where like you're, you're really looking into a deep, deep hole. And we call that positive parallax. And at the same time, the image can extend from the screen out into the audience, or what's called the audience space, and can, uh, excuse me, can extend out into the audience space and can bring there a real sense of, of presence out there. We call this negative parallax. Do you know if that's with two L's or one? Just made you think, made you think, OK. So at any rate, uh, this, this is what we're talking about when we're talking about uh, stereoscopic 3D. But the notion here is that it, on this last piece is that images can actually protrude from the screen or even seem to free float in space. Now. Imagine with me, uh, let's, let's think of an ordinary classroom uh, lesson. And it's, they're teaching this lesson on the solar system. And the teachers taught a great lesson, got some great concepts across. The kids have a good textbook. They've read some materials. They've got great illustrations in the textbook about uh, the solar system. And then they may have had time to do some drawings or even uh, watch a small movie segment. But now take a step farther with me as the students embark from the Earth on a virtual immersive field trip into outer space. And as they pass into the outer limits there, they suddenly, oh, they encounter a meteor, excuse me, an, uh, an asteroid belt. And the asteroids are flying right out of the screen at them, coming out, oh, but they're safe because they're going off to the left. And then they slow down and come to the planet that they selected to study, and they're able to stop and explore and inspect and investigate and dig in and learn and want in wonderment. And, and the teacher begins to take a back seat as the students really start to take over the class with their questioning and their, their, exp their exploration. Now, that might sound like science fiction, but it's not. That just happened in three of our fourth grade classrooms in April. And there's our kids. Now, we've been doing some sense-making about 3D. That's important to do. Uh, some deep thinking about what about this 3D business that belongs in schools and what that doesn't. And that's probably an important role for you to determine what makes sense and uh, in your own community setting. But uh, let's start with one of our main learnings, and that is that we've determined there are five major types of 3D content out there for schools today, and we've organized them into a taxonomy range from, on the left side, from the least engaging and least sophisticated to the most engaging and most sophisticated on the right side. And what we've learned is that there are, certainly are 3D movies and 3D movie segments, but our teachers really aren't interested in those. We just don't need more entertainment in the classroom. No, 
What they're, what they're looking for are things at the higher level of this taxonomy, like large collections of 3D learning objects that can be brought into the classroom to bring alive concepts for the kids right in the room, or micro simulations, which is our third tier there, uh, which are learning objects with a certain degree of interactivity to them, or even simulations, which are co more complex, immersive environments that let kids go places where they couldn't possibly have gone before or see things they couldn't have ever seen before even to the point of constructivist content creation, where students are actually making 3D content for their own communities or for the teachers and younger children in their own school community. And then we've learned another important thing very recently in working with 3D, and that is, is that whole notion of ne negative parallax. We need a little bit more of that. You remember that double L? Did you get that, double L? Okay, that's the, uh, that's the no remember when something comes out of the, that's right. <laughs> Something comes out of the screen at you, and uh, it's kind of an interesting challenge, because think about this. How many of you have, uh, 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 well, I'll, I'll skip that question. I'll come to that one later. If you think about the, the movies, all 3D movies that you've seen are built from a metaphor of you're looking through a window out at a unique, fascinating world out there, and it's really something else. But teachers want something from that world to come back through the window to them instead of just looking. Because ordinary movies, ordinary 2D movies can do that. So I ran into this picture, kind of demonstrates the metaphor that we're trying to express. That, you know, and, and this is a serious issue because the entire industry is of, of entertainment is dedicated to making you look through a window at something very interesting and, and, and uh, fascinating. But teachers want something compelling something to come back through the window so the kids can reach out and touch and understand and digest and explore. And that's a major difference that we see out there in terms of uh, what, where we're headed with 3D. Now, how many of you have seen the 3D movie Avatar? I love that movie. Come on, raise your hands. Oh, how that, that, that's a big group there. We've seen a lot of, a lot of folks have seen that. Now, uh, this movie was nominated for seven Academy Awards, but only won two awards, both in technical categories. And my message here is that when 3D comes to school, that it need not be about technical accolades. Wow, that's cool. Wow, that's high tech. We don't need that. What we need is we need to earn learning accolades, where it has a real success rate with kids, it produces results in learning, and it makes a difference in terms of how kids learn. That's our, our goal there. But the uh, real, uh, excuse me, the, uh, an imp there's a couple important lessons that we can learn from the cinema world about uh, how this will play out in schools. First of all, if you look at the history of uh, cinematic history, you'll notice that all great films have two basic fundamentals, a great screenplay and powerful delivery by talented actors. The same two things will hold true in, as 3D comes to schools, however. The notion is that the screenplay is like that, qual that quality content that we saw, not the, the uh, passive media that we grew up with in our generation, but some of those interactive experiences that we saw in the previous taxonomy. And the, <coughs> excuse me, the, um, so that's the screenplay, but as far as the actors, well, guess who the actors are? Those are the, the that the, involves the impassioned delivery of creative teachers and talent stu talented students who will take this type of technology and this content and transform it into something powerful, functional, and useful for, the, for schools and for schooling. Now, in, uh, in my opinion, it, it's only these things that will really produce an Oscar-winning performance for 3D in teaching and learning in our nation's classrooms. Now, throughout this presentation, I have modeled the uh, entire history since uh, for many decades of 3D uh, glassware and eyewear. But as a fitting conclusion to uh, our little talk today, I'd like to model for you and demonstrate for you the latest in the evolution of 3D glassware for anytime, anywhere learning 3D clip-on glasses. Thank you.